Hi everyone, this is Jerry. I'm here with Sergio from Practical Combat Martial Arts. A lot of you are big fans of him, so we decided, you know what, let's have a conversation. Sergio, welcome. How are you, Jerry? Oh, Thank it's great, man. You. Thank you so much for coming on. It's my pleasure, man. Thanks for the, you know, the time and the interview. And let me tell you, you have a great channel. You're going to be one of the number one channel very soon. And trust me, everybody's talking about you. Dude, thank you so much. So let's go on ahead. Tell me about your martial arts training. Okay, I'm going to try to do a quick overview. I'm Cuban. I'm 33 years old. In 10 days, I'm going to be 34. Wow. Uh, start training martial arts when I was seven. Um, I don't want to be talking about politics, but Cuba is a communist country. Mm -hmm. So there is law enforcement, of course, but mostly they are there to enforce uh, that you follow uh, the political party. So they don't get involved that much if there is a fight on the school or if there is a fight on the street, unless there is a dead, dead person or if it's a big deal. So self-defense and martial art was a big thing. Now I'm kind of built because I train a lot. And, and all that but before i was super skinny i always was super skinny mm -hmm. and when i was seven years old i got in a fight with a big bully in my school he beat me on in front of the whole school wow. so in the front of the whole school it was a big big disappointment uh, for me as a person and and he like two you know he threw me two haymakers oh, like the hammer fists <laughs> that's it mm -hmm. lights out completely out so that night I saw Bloodsport, the jump club and that movie. Mm -hmm. And I said to my dad, I want to learn that. If I learn that, I'll be able to defend myself. Mm -hmm. Despite that, I fought the guy again, barehanded, and it was kind of like a tight, but I know he wasn't going to be easy on me. So I enrolled in karate. Mm -hmm. So I started training karate when I was seven years old in Cuba. Karate is controlled by the government. So you take classes Monday to Friday, two hours a day, so it's really strict. It's like hardcore, wow. five days a week, so two hours a day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, little by little, I was learning not to do this karate. Uh, you know, I had my kicks. I have my karate punches like Suki, Yakosuki. But there was so much stuff that I couldn't really learn. I, I always felt a void in my martial arts. Mm. So when I was um, on a street fight, I was skinny. Or if I saw a street fight, I, could, I was going nervous. And I was afraid, honestly. Again, I could kick, but if somebody would put me in a headlock or if it was multiple attackers, I didn't know what to do. And honestly, my sensei neither knew what to do. Um, again, I wasn't a black belt at the time, so time passes on. I get 15 years old. I got my black belt. I passed the exam. But still, I wasn't fully able to defend myself until I met a friend of mine, Ray, he was just one year older than me, but he had been training Kung Fu, in this case, uh, Bagua. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna... um, but he was training Bagua, and he, one day he told me, yeah, let's just part. And I said, be careful, I'm a black belt. I could beat you off. It was all the contrary. I throw a roundhouse kick to the face. Next thing I'm seeing is the roof, and I had a big pain on the, on the back. So I was thinking maybe... The floor was slippery. So I go again with a Suki, Jacko Suki, and a roundhouse kick. I see the floor again. I don't understand what happened. So I go, I'm going to throw my big kick, which is the spinning back kick. Did not better. So I throw the back kick again, the spinning back kick, and I see myself flying through the air and going to the floor again. So I ask him, what do you know? And he told me, Kung Fu. And I said, but wait, Kung Fu doesn't work. It's bullshit. And he said to me, well, depends on how you train. Because a kick is a kick, punch is a punch, a takedown is a takedown. If it doesn't work, why haven't you able to strike me? And, you know, I told him, okay, let's try again. And I see I couldn't do much things to him. So I start asking questions. What if somebody put you on a headlock? What do you do? And he started giving me... I do this. Okay, can I do a full force? Let's try it out. And every time he had the answer. So I started training with him. He showed me it was a gym style. Uh, it has eight animals. It has Ryan. Uh, but, you know, Cuba is kind of like a melting pot. You have karate, you have boxing, you have judo, you have um, esgrima, you have wrestling, good wrestling in Cuba. If you look at the Olympic record, we have really good wrestler. Mm -hmm. So whatever technique we had, we were learning, we have to pressure test it. 
against those people. Mm -hmm. And everybody was willing to punch you. You know, just to try it out. Hey, I'm a boxer. Can I try to punch you? Let's see what you have worked. Wow. So that's how I got involved in the martial arts. Then um, we were three years training together, like six hours a day. And remember, Q is different than USA. You have a lot of free time. There is no much TV. So you spend your time doing sports, talking to friends. So then I went to to train with Ray Teacher. He, his name is Roberto Vargas Lee, that's in Havana. I trained some more by one, some Wushu, and then I moved to USA. I stopped training like for five years. Um, and then I did some Kempo, American Kempo. And then I went to train in American Top Team. That's, that was back in 2011 with Alexis Pila, Joel Romero, Jocelyn Liz Izquierdo. I don't know if you've seen Rudy Caceres. Mm -hmm. With all those people, I have videos with them. I have them on Facebook. We train like every day. It was really, really nice. And, you know, I learned the Kung Fu I learned had a lot of techniques on the floor that you cannot do it on sports because it's not ethical and some may not work versus a seasonal grappler. But it will work versus the average show that may want to be on top of you. So more or less, that's my background. I had two MMA fights back in 2012. Then I didn't fight again until 2017 that I went into the kickboxing championships because my channel was getting some attention and people were saying, hey, Sergio, if come to work, prove it, go and fight. Well, well, guys, I, I have I have fought already. I just don't have the videos. So I prepare myself, film the videos, and I fought, and I won. And then this year, like three months ago, I had an amateur kickboxing fight, and wow. I won again. And that's it. I've I just been training myself. More or less, I have told you the overall of what I have done and trained. Uh, but, you know, now I'm all yours, so start asking questions. My yeah. Friend. The first question I just had while you're describing your journey is the guy that, that you sparred in Bagua that got you thinking about maybe mixing up the martial arts. Do you know what lineage of Bagua he was or like how Ying long? Style. He Ying style. Oh, Ying style. Okay. Yeah. What happened is, uh, again, I may be incorrect and I'm in USA now, I have research and remember English is not my first language. Mm -hmm. So you can always double check the, the conversation. But for what I understand, when China China became communist, many people left the country because yep. they were not okay, they didn't want it. So many people went to, to Cuba. Oh. They, Huge Chinatown in Cuba, like huge. Oh. In the middle of Havana, there is a huge Chinatown in Cuba. So the Chinese established themselves there. They even fought against the American. They even fought against the Spanish for freedom for Cuba. There are styles in Cuba that I haven't found information in the internet that has been passed <sighs> generation to generation. I, I'm gonna send you some videos later. Yeah, so please. Bad quality videos, because again, they were from 2003, but you're gonna see techniques that you haven't seen anywhere else. Styles like Kei Xiao, that has been passed from father to son, father to son. And to a certain point, the government in Cuba went and said, wait, you guys are living here. We're giving you everything. You're giving to your sanctuary. Can you teach what you have to our people as a culture team? So for what I understand also, um, the sports um, university, I don't know if it's Beijing. We can check that later and send you. Mm -hmm. Is sponsoring the national uh, Chinese Kung Fu school in Cuba that Roberto Vargas Lee is the Sifu. So we have Nanpai, we have Wushu, we have Bawa, we have Hungar, and all those styles are completely overseas by China people from people from China. So we send people from Cuba to China, people from China stay there and oversee the trainings. So the style I learned from Ray was the Yin style Bagua. Wow. That's, That's so fascinating. Mm -hmm. and there were that uh, he told me like have you seen the circular movement in in, in Bagua? Mm -hmm. Circle I would say, okay, why do I have to walk in circles when mostly we fight in and out? And he will have explanations like said, look, some people haven't finished the style and they just know how to walk in circles. They just imitate. What happens is you want to walk and strike at the same time. So you may be walking in one line, then you may search for an angle, strike and keep moving. But you don't have to do a circle. For instance, he will tell me, 
If somebody throws a roundhouse kick to my face, this is an example, mm -hmm. in karate to make block like this, or let's say in MMA they told you, answer the phone and parry. So in Bagua, Ray would tell me, okay, answer the phone, parry, and then grab the leg and circle the person. Now his back is towards you. So now you're comfortable and he's uncomfortable. So now you can counter better. So those circle motions and all those techniques, they have a place and a time. So many people don't understand because they haven't finished the style or they just want to believe in, believe in the mystic side the, <laughs> and all that. And that doesn't work like that. Yeah, I'm talking about that. Some people actually criticize Bruce Lee because he didn't even really learn all of Wing Chun. He maybe learned 40% of Wing Chun and then he's like, oh, this is not useful. I'm going to incorporate it with everything, you know. So I, there are some Wing Chun people who criticize Bruce Lee for that. So it's very interesting you mentioned that too because I'm sure a lot of people, they learn these styles, let's say Bagua Tai Chi, and they don't see the applications and maybe they've only learned 60% of it, 50% of it, and then they're like, oh, but I, I don't know, this is kind of useless, uh, right? So it's an interesting point you make. Yeah, that that's more or less. Look, I'll be honest with you. Bruce Lee for me was not a big influence. Actually, I have learned more of Bruce Lee here, but uh, the way he has a yeah, he didn't finish the Wing Chun, but no martial art is perfect. Mm -hmm. The MMA is not perfect. BJJ is not perfect. Bagua is not perfect. Wing Chun is not perfect. Styles don't win fights. People win fights. So for Bruce Lee, maybe he didn't finish the Wing Chun, the Wing Chun, but he had a good base. So he mixed it up, let's say, with boxing and judo. Yeah. He found ways to make Wing Chun work that other people couldn't because while they were busy trying to learn the Silun town to be perfect, the way they move, Bruce Lee was trying, okay, I'm going to pass out you, and the moment I'm inside you, I'm going to do a Riponcido nice, so a judo throw. Yeah. And the, he will have more tools to answer you. Yeah. He will have better tools because he was... Um, how can I say, bringing things that were not common at the time. Yeah. So the guy was ahead of his time. Yeah. And that's what I like about talking to MMA people. Like I would call you a mixed martial artist, but you're not the tr you're not like what people think about as like your standard stereotype of a mixed martial artist because you had karate, you had kung fu, you had all that, you know. The standard mixed art martial artist that people think about, it's like, "Ooh, Muay Thai as you're striking and then BJJ or judo or something as you're as you're grappling." So it's like you had a very cool journey and again, it's called mixed martial arts for a reason. You mixed what worked for you and you became right. your own mixed martial artist. All right. I want to put an example. Um, what's your uh, your favorite uh, striking art? I would say probably Muay Thai. Okay, perfect. Let's say you and I are fighting. Let me put you an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, I throw a jab, you block it. Mm -hmm. Then I throw a roundhouse kick, like Muay Thai style, you block it. In that moment, I switch. And I throw a kick, like going a straight line and switching and just like very tight to you and a roundhouse kick to the face. So I done that in, in the kickboxing fight I had last year that I KO the guy. I was very sorry about that because I was just trying to score like points to confuse the guy. I wasn't trying to win the fight so fast and I finished the fight in three seconds. Wow. But the idea that I'm trying to bring you, you know, to validate your point mm -hmm. is that you have to make things work for you because Muta is very good, but I throw a kick, you block it. You throw me a kick, I block it. It's my time to switch. So in that moment, I may have a particular strike from Kung Fu that may work, like mm -hmm. what I'm telling you. I bring my knee up in like 90 degree and then I switch my hips and then I switch the kick. So for somebody who hasn't trained, say, oh, that's a roundhouse kick. All the roundhouse kick are the same. They're no, they're not the same. So that's the moment I encountered to mix the arts. So that's the way I practice myself. That's why I call my channel Practical Combat Martial Arts because I try to do everything practical. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is a score, there is things that for me work that may you know, work for you, but that's what we train. Exactly. So your left arm is faster than my left arm, but maybe I'm faster with my right arm. Maybe the blocks I use confuse you, like maybe you're used to people bobbing and weaving and maybe I'm like doing, like, let's say, Pike Sao or a Bone Sao, whatever, and you are like, hey, what the hell was that? So that's my time. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's why I to do my martial arts. Exactly. Uh, a very nerdy example I'll give you too. So there's a game that every Chinese person plays. 
you okay. take four playing cards and you try to make the num you try to use any kind of um mathematical formula to take these four numbers on the cards and mm -hmm. get get it to equal 24. This is why Chinese people are so good at math. We, we okay. play these math games. And so when I used to play it with, with my friends, you know, because I was, I was little, we would do, use like the division, the multiplication, the addition, and the subtraction, right? And then my cousin who was older one time, he gave me these four cards. He's like, okay, try to make 24. And I couldn't do it with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So okay. he showed me a way, and he did some kind of like thing, you know, with the two numbers that I've never done before because you know he knew more math than me. Okay. And I was like, oh, so he got he got twenty four, and I said, um, you can't do that. He's like, why? Because you 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 didn't know about that that way of doing the numbers. And it's like it's like I just I don't know why I thought of this as an analogy, but it's the same with martial arts. Is the same. You know, whatever it, gets you the 24, whatever gets you to be able to defend yourself or win a match, whatever your purpose is, and you put it in. And it's going to be different than other people. Everyone gets the 24 differently. I'm going to put you an example. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best fighter in the world. I will never be the best fighter in the world. Um, there is many things that I don't know. There is many things I want to improve about myself. But sometimes in my videos, I try to show spawning, pressure testing. I have bought equipment. Have you ever heard of the Spartan training gear, Spartan training armor? No, tell it's, us. Okay, it's like a helmet that usually law enforcement people use it, that you could do like a lot of strikes, like elbow punches, and the person receiving the strike is safe. So it covers the whole body. So I have that equipment, and sometimes I pressure test techniques. So people are now used to... Uh, seeing like boxing, Muay Thai, wrestling to take the person down, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to put the person on the floor. So the example I want to put sometimes, I have a, a throw because Pawa has a lot of throws. Not like Judo, but it has a lot of throws. And it's similar like the hip throw in Judo, but you pass the hip a little bit more. So like you overcome it. However, that technique works for me 100% of the time. And some people say, oh, you did that technique incorrect. And I stop and ask him, where? The person is in the floor? Yes. Am I standing up? Yes. So they fall? Yes. They counter? No. So the technique is correct. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes um, one thing may be incorrect for one martial art and for the other one will be correct. Like, for instance, the Muay Thai roundhouse kick, you go through the target using the hips and hitting with the uh, shin bone. In karate, you try to, to slap as well as in Kung Fu. You have also, I know in karate, you may do it. You have Kung Fu techniques that you go through. But in Kung Fu, you also go with a slap. So if somebody from what I see, you say, oh, that's incorrect. You're going to break your bone, your, your uh, metatarchy bones. No, I won't. I have done it a thousand times. I won't. It's working for me. Why is it incorrect? And at the same time, some people, somebody from Kung Fu may say, oh, but you are very open. I could kick you in the thigh. I could kick you in the groin. What I try to say is there is no perfect martial art. You have to make it work for you. And whatever exactly. works for you is what it works. Yeah. I remember when I used to do Kung Fu when I was little. And I would see the karate guys and the Taekwondo guys. I would see them do their kicks. And it kind of looked like Kung Fu. But I'm like, oh, but it's not as pretty as Kung Fu. And I always like say stuff like that. It, it, it's because back then you were in that mentality of, oh, yeah, yeah, you have one style for you. But like what we're saying... You make whatever works for you. Take the good stuff and you you make it work for you in whatever martial art. And the, uh, that, that brings to another point, which is sometimes if you really want to defend yourself, screw the aesthetics, man. You know? Oh, for sure. I agree. Forget about it. It doesn't have to be pretty. It, it doesn't have to be pretty. Okay. How many times have you seen USC fights? And the fighters are doing techniques that are incorrect, like standing on their toes or not or extending their leg, or maybe throwing the jab and, and, and breaking the center line. But they're hitting the other person. So it is incorrect. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. So you give it a take. You have to make it work for you. One thing I have to tell you in general, um, why I like Kung Fu is because of the principles. It's not because of the techniques. The principles, for me, is what it gives me the most sense um, of the martial arts. I would say the closest in principles is Filipino martial arts, which I have received a few seminars. 
they explain a lot. They have they work with triangles. They work with like the bagua a, a pentagram, ectogram. Sorry, I don't know the translation in English. It's the the symbol in bagua. Yeah, she, I always I always forget how to say that word too. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, but work with the angles. You work with triangles. You work with that, and I like that. But at the end, um, I have to say the problem I see with kung fu is that attract a lot of people that only want to do form. Mm-hmm. And if form is not gonna work for you, you have to do physical training. You have to run. You have to lift weights. You have to spar. You learn the form. You understand what it's about, and then you move on. You move on. Uh, I may ask you, you're Chinese, right? Yeah. Okay, where are you right now? China or? Um, I'm in LA, Los Angeles. Oh, you know, I was there like two months ago. If I knew that, I, I would. Oh, have... dude, meet, let's meet up next time. Dude, I'll come visit you in Miami sometime too. I've never been to okay. Miami. Anytime, anytime. Uh, you're welcome to pass by. We can mm-hmm. train here at the school. Uh, we can we can train at my place, or we, we can do it for sure. Yeah, I try- and dude, please come to LA, man. I, I if I knew, I, I honestly, I'll tell you, I didn't know about your channel until if, like a month ago. So if I knew two months ago, dude, and you were in LA, we would. Oh, that would have been so fun. Most likely, I could go in two or three months again because I do it because of the work. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. That's perfect, I, man. And we could like do um, demonstrations and put examples. Uh, I have to tell you about your channel, man. You are doing good job, man. I like how you watch the fights and explain it. And I like how you, from my point of view and my friends, you are truthful. Like, you are impartial. You don't care if, if, if it's from what I, BAA, you just expose it as it is. Yeah, I try to. I mean, I won't lie and ha- say I have my biases. You know, I, I tend to... I tend to think certain styles probably work better than other styles, but you know, part of it is my audience really helps me. They're like, Jerry, um, you're getting too biased here. And then I'm like, okay, let's, let's be more impartial. So I got to thank my audience. And you know, I really thank you for commenting that time I put your video. I'm like, oh dude, that's awesome, right? The more feedback I get, the more I'm like, oh, you see, this is, it's all about the fighters. It's all about this. It's all about that. Okay, take one MMA fighter, let's say, um, let me put you an example of somebody I know. Uh, you are Romero. Mm-hmm. How many people have said that you cannot fight over 40 or four years? He's 41. He's now, he's not training anymore on American top team. He's training with somebody else, by the way, a Cuban guy, Taekwondo guy. Mm-hmm. But your yeah. Romero was the type of person he, he would wake up at 6 a.m. and he would run for. 10 miles. Wow. Breakfast, he would take a nap. At 9 a.m., he would be at the gym, hitting pads with, you know, um, somebody telling them, telling him what to do. He would do physical training. Then again at 5 p.m., sorry, 9 p.m., he would be in the school training again. So people tell you, oh, I'm 40 years old. I cannot do it. I have to retire. But look at him. He's just still fighting and kicking. You know, not perfect. He has lost twice with, um, what is the name of the guy? Whitaker. Whitaker. But you know, he, he has good, good fights, man. Yeah. And people say, oh, you're going to do it. Well, he's doing it. Again, it's a personal level. It's up to the person. It's yeah, I agree. And this is, you mentioned something so important that I want to mention to our both our audiences too. It's never too late. Um, never. You know, I got injured in Kung Fu, so I stopped for many years. But then eventually I said, I don't have to do kung fu again. I can learn another art. That's why I decided to start jujitsu. I was like, you, you, you will be able to find something that'll work for you. That's the beauty of the the modern day because there's so many martial arts all around the world here in America or in anywhere. So you you can find something. Yeah, for sure, I agree. Before we go, because I am teaching a class and I have to go back, I want to give one advice to your audience, and this is up to you if you want to keep it. Sometimes we don't have the money to pay a school. Sometimes we don't have the money or the time to pay somebody. But in America, we have an obesity problem. I personally have an obesity problem due to health issues. My liver doesn't work right. Mm. I had hepatitis. I was in bed for a year. I got better, but I have never healed back. So every time I'm going to fight, I have to work twice as hard. And if I have to lose 20 pounds, I have to work like if I was going to lose 60 pounds. 
But the point I'm trying to make is life is not perfect. If you don't have the money to train with somebody in person, my recommendation to your audience and my audience is always work out by yourself. At least do the basics. 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 10 squats, stretch yourself, repeat the process four times, and finish. Because maybe in three months you're going to have the money to train with an instructor and your body is going to be in better shape. So I always try to tell my students when they're in and out training or they're busy, my audience, and my recommendation to your audience, if you don't have instructor but you want to get into martial arts or basically for health, just exercise, go to the basic. 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 10 um, squats, stretch like the whole body, kind of like in a yoga routine, and repeat the same thing four times. You don't need much space. You can do it before showering, 20, 25 minutes, and you're going to be okay. So I don't know if you want to include that. That's up to you. Yeah, but absolutely. No thing to tell our people because yeah. you never have the opportunity to train. Exactly. That's such a great point that Sergio made. It's just – um, it's always good to be fit, right? Even think about it like this. Even if you don't have money to train right now, um, mm -hmm. what if someone attacks you? At least be fit enough to run away. My campus professor in the master is, I think he's in Los Angeles now, Rick Ianusos. He will always tell me, when you train martial arts, forget about the style, any martial arts. One of the biggest um, benefits is the fitness because sometimes you cannot fight, but if you can run, somebody that trains, even if you are afraid to fight, you're running. You're going to be running with more cardio and better than a regular Joe or it's a street talk, a correct word, street talk. Yeah, street talk. You say that. Yeah. You, you're going to, you're most likely going to have better cardio than him. So martial arts is escape for you from the daily basis. You work out. And if you need to save your life, you may have techniques that will help you. But if you need to run, since you train in several aspects of the body, most likely you're gonna be running better than the person who wants to attack you. So, my brother, thank you very much for the interview. Maybe we can do a part two. Maybe I would like to interview you for my channel. Mm -hmm. That way, my people could know about you more. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, thank you very much. Um, I'm very happy that you gave me this opportunity. Um, keep on your journey because your channel. I'm telling you, man. It's rocking. I see every day you get more subscribers, more likes. You're bringing attention from everybody, from Bridget J, from Mutai, from Kung Fu, from Karate. I'm telling you, and not because we're talking, but you right now has, for me, the best one channel of martial arts online. Oh, wow. Thank you, man. And everyone watching, Sergio from Practical Combat Martial Arts, great channel. And I will definitely be looking at and learning from a lot more of his videos. So all of you go subscribe to him, and um, we will do a part two. And Sergio, when you come to L.A. or when I come to Miami, we'll do videos together. For sure. For sure. Thank you, brother. Okay? Awesome. Enjoy your class. For sure. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.